Prophets, we're almost high in Christ blessed. My name is Captain Shem. Welcome to another edition of 15 Minutes with the Captain. And to my left is Officer Matthew. Okay, so most high in Christ blessed. We're going to start first. This is another multi part series entitled Health and Diet. And before we begin, I want to show you the history that, yes, we as Israelites, we would be destroyed and we, our food would be defiled and we would depend on our enemies. Okay, let's start with Ezekiel 4, verse 13. Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 13. And the Lord said, Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles. So we would be amongst the Gentiles, which were the other nations, eating defiled bread. Read it again. And the Lord said, Even thus shall the children of Israel. The children of Israel, come on. Eat their defiled bread. Defiled meaning the, the, the food. It's not just bread, because the Israelites, we eat more than just bread, which we're going to prove. It's talking about our food would be defiled. Sometimes in the past, we were defiled through sacrifices. Okay? They would sacrifice animals to other gods, and then we would eat of that meat. And Romans 14 talked about that. Okay? About in the shambles. All right? But now, today, guess what? Our food is defiled with the ingredients that they put in our meats, the steroids they put, the GMOs, okay? The other multi-25 ingredients on a snack cake or a snack product. Our food is literally being defiled by our enemies, the Gentiles. Read on. Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles. Amongst our and the other nations which are our enemies, according to God. Read on. Whither I will drive them. And we have been driven to where? North America, South America, Central America. We're driven to the European countries, to the UK, to Africa, parts of India, all over the world. Wherever the Israelites go, our bread has been defiled. Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. Again, this is a quick 15 minutes with the captains showing you that, listen, we've got a lot of work to do, Israel, and not enough time. All right? Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 48. All right. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. The enemies. The enemies that Ezekiel were talking about were the Gentiles. Read on. Which the Lord shall send against thee. And he sent it, uh, they, those enemies against us. Read on. In hunger. In hunger. Read on. And in thirst. And in thirst. So right there, bam, in hunger and in thirst. What do you eat? Food. Your bread. Your plants. Your vegetables. The animals you eat. Read on. And in nakedness. And for your clothes. Come on. And in want of all things. Even our understanding of how to farm, develop our crops, start up food distribution companies. We have to depend on him. Why? It's going to tell you. Read on. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. Which nation, which Gentile nation put a yoke of iron upon the Israelites' necks? In recent history, it's the so-called white man. The Caucasian, the European Caucasian. Read a book, it's history. Back during the time of Babylon, which we're going to read next, Jeremiah was carried in, into captivity by the Babylonians, which were a dark race. So the Israelites weren't just enslaved from the so-called white men. Okay, we were enslaved of all nations. Is that it on the Officer Matthew? Yes, sir. Okay, let's get the book of Jeremiah 29. Now, in the book of Jeremiah, you're going to find that the 12 tribes of the Israelites went into captivity for approximately for 70 years. Now, even in captivity, you're going to find that the Israelites would be able to overcome, and they still, okay, had the understanding of how to farm, okay, how to build, and that's what we need to come back. Because back during this time, Jeremiah knew he was an Israelite. The Israelites knew they were Israel. Now, today, we've been completely destroyed. When you ask the average black man in the street, what is your race, your nationality? He'll tell you, I am black American, which makes no sense. Jeremiah 29 and verse, verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 4. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. So the same thing, Ezekiel said, thus saith the Lord to the prophet Ezekiel. Now, Jeremiah, thus saith the Lord. Read it again. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Come on. The God of Israel. The God of Israel. Come on. Unto all that are carried away captives. So the, the subject is the Israelites were carried away captives. Did they go willingly? Hey, we'll go work for you in Babylon. Sounds great, Chuck. No, we were slaves. Read. Whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. So we were carried from Jerusalem to Babylon. 
So we're not, this is not the first time the Israelites have gone into captivity. Why do we go here? Because there's some heavy information in this next scripture. Read on. Build ye houses. So the first thing is that the Israelites had builders, meaning they understood carpentry. Look at Noah and the boat, the ark. Okay, they understood carpentry, woodworking. They understood stonework. They understood how to build houses. And guess what? Did one person get a mortgage and build his house? No. The Israelites came together. Like you see today, you see the Amish people. They do that. In two to three, four days, they construct a whole house for the person that uh, sometimes they get married in their communities. And they all come together as a community and build a house. And this is in the 80s, 90s, and up until this today. 1990s and 2000s to today. Okay? Read it again. Build ye houses. Build ye houses. Come on. And dwell in them. And then live in those houses. Read on. And plant gardens. What? And plant gardens. So the Israelites, the 12 tribes of Israel, even in their captivity, the state of being a servant, they still built houses. They still planted gardens. Why did I go here? Because now today, the Israelites, we are being restored as a nation. Okay, a lot of us was in our 30s and our 40s when we woke up. Some of us in our 20s. So our whole lives, we called us up African-American, Mexican-American, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans. Okay, now we realize that we are the Israelites. And a lot of us, most of us that grew up in the city or urban, suburban, we did not. We was raised around gardening and orchards. But our forefathers had that understanding. And why is it important? In part two, we're going to show you why it's important. But right now, we're going to continue on. Read on. And plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. So in a garden, there's things that come out. That's the fruit. So for example, if I plant eggplants from the seed and I water them and I deal with the soil right, the fruit that comes out will feed my house. Okay, if I plant apple trees, orange trees, satsuma trees, lemon trees, Okay, if I plant white zapote trees, that's a subtropical fruit that can even grow in some parts of the U.S. You can do mangoes. So, also, we can also build greenhouses. Because a greenhouse is a house, right? So we can build greenhouses to help take advantage of our growing seasons. Why? Part two is going to tell you why. We know is it more now? That's okay. Beautiful. Let's get the book of, real quick, let's get the book of... Uh, do I want, yes, I want to go there. Get me the book of Ecclesiastes, right after Proverbs, chapter 2. What you are going to find, it wasn't just in Jeremiah's era that the Israelites knew how to farm. The Israelites knew how to deal with crops and soil. Jeremiah, we're going to go back to King Solomon. Jeremiah was after King Solomon, okay? The Israelites understood farming, which we call today farming. The Israelites understood agriculture. The Israelites understood that growing your own food is very, very, very important. Okay? Read on. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 4. Can we get verse 1? Verse 1. I said in mine heart, go to now, I will prove thee with mirth. Therefore enjoy pleasure, and behold, this also is vanity. Okay, so this is Solomon, just so you know. And myrrh is a spice or an, an oil type that you can get. And in order to get myrrh, you have to grow it. It's grown and then you get it, you can press it out. Same thing when you get um, different uh, lavender oils. They're grown and then you make lavender oil. Tea trees, you grow it, you, you make oils. Okay, avocados, you grow it and you make oils. Okay, read. Jump the first side uh, where he was at four. Verse four. I made me great works. I builded me houses. Stop. Read it again. I made me great work. So what we're going to read about is not a, he didn't have a little 12 by 12 garden in the back. We're talking about great works that happened with this brother, King Solomon. Read on. I builded me houses. So now, Jeremiah, remember Jeremiah talked about building houses. So Solomon, we was in rulership at this time. So whether you're in rulership or captivity, it don't give you an excuse not to build houses, not to try to get a home, not to try to guard it. There's no excuse, Read. I planted me vineyards. So what is a vineyard? Look it up. A vineyard, a vineyard, a grape vineyard is a place where multiple plants grow at once. You can have a grape vineyard. You can have many different types. You can have a vegetable vineyard. 
Okay, there's different, it's just not grapes that are grown in vineyards. Read on. I made me gardens. Gardens, so vineyards and gardens. Read on. And orchards. And what? And orchards. So wait a minute. Our forefathers understood an orchard, a peach orchard, a pear orchard, an apple orchard, a strawberry field. So he said, he said orchard, what else he said? I planted me gardens. So orchards, gardens, read on. And I think there was also vineyards. vineyards. Start from the top. I made me great works. Great works, come on. I builded me houses. These brothers was building houses, read on. I planted me vineyards. He planted vineyards. So it wasn't just one little great plant. He had whole parts of the property dedicated to what? Did they grow them just so they could look at them and say they look beautiful? No, he fed the Israelites. Read. I made me gardens. Gardens, vegetable gardens. You can have watermelons in your garden. You can have carrots, broccoli, kale, turnip greens, okay, radishes, beets, okay. You can have dandelion roots. All different things that the 12 tribes of Israel have a history of doing great works. Read on. And orchards. And orchards, apple, peach, pear, plum. So why am I bringing this out? Because you Israelites, IUIC, us as the 12 tribes of Israel, we need to go back and remember our roots. Romans 15 verse 4. Why? Why did I say that? We need to go back and remember our roots. Because my forefather, Paul, the Benjamite, told me to do this. Told you to do it at home. Told Officer Matthew to do it at home. Okay? So David, so did David is filming this, told him to do it at home. Read. Romans chapter 15 verse 4. What did Paul the Benjamite say? Read. For whatsoever things were written aforetime. So we can go back to Jeremiah when there was slaves carried away captive in Solomon when he was the king of Israel. He had great works. He had vineyards. He had orchards. And he had gardens. Plural. Not one garden. I have one garden. I have one orchard. He had orchards. Plural. He had vineyards. Plural. He had gardens. Plural. Read on. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were back written. Back in Jeremiah, back in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes rather, come on. Were written for our learning. So we're supposed to learn from that. So, well listen, well, I know I grew up in a city and I get it, but you know what? I got to learn. How did Solomon have orchards? How did he have gardens? How did now, Jeremiah is actually a better comparison, they were under subjection to the Babylonians. Who are we in the subjection to? You guessed it. So call white men. And I don't say that with malice. He rules over us. In 1965, you finally got called with the, the right to drink at the same water fountain. We just got, came out of hardcore slavery. Okay? Well, civil rights is a, is a form. Denying civil rights is a form of slavery. We just came out of slavery. Hardcore slavery about 150 years ago. Okay? We got to wake up, read on, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. And you might start planting a garden. And you might get all distressed because you, you didn't, your crops died the first year. Or you might get frustrated because your soil composition wasn't, didn't have the right pH balance with nitrogen and different um, properties. So you might give up hope. The scriptures say, nah, man. Read it again. For whatsoever things were written aforetime. So we get we have the scriptures to go in and make gardens and make vineyards and orchards. All we have to do is learn, like Paul told us, and be patient. And we know that it was done before through Jeremiah. We know it was done before during the time of Solomon. We have to be patient. We need to grow our own food. Why is that important? Because even if let me give you an example. I'm not gonna put any names out there. You go to YouTube right now, and there are people out there that have a third, meaning one over three, one over four, a, a quarter of an acre, and have over 100 fruit trees on that small property. A lot of us have a half an acre, a third of an acre, one acre, more than one acre. And you live in a growing climate like Tennessee, like Louisiana, like Mississippi, like Texas, like Arkansas, like Georgia, like Florida. And you don't grow your own food. A lot of that is because we've been destroyed. We've been destroyed. And we, we are spoiled in America with Walmarts, grocery stores, Costco's. We are spoiled. And they make vittles cheap. Well, guess what? When they start coming against you and you lose your job, you're going to have to learn. So we got to be proactive. We got to learn these scriptures. 
be motivated by and have hope. Listen, brothers, we can grow orchards. We can grow vineyards. We can grow gardens, and there's a lot of resources to help us. There's gardening guides. We gotta get the right seeds. We gotta get the right plants for the right zones. There are growing zones that run like laterally, latitudinally across the US and other parts. Find out what crops grow. Learn to deal with your soil. And guess what? We too can be like our forefathers. Read it again. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Us to learn from. Read on. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Might have hope that we can grow our own food too. And guess what? We start to do that in Louisiana. We start slowly but surely. And we want to challenge you, brothers and sisters. Even if you live in the north or the north part, you can build the greenhouse. Okay? You can grow a certain amount of things. Even in your own apartment, you can grow a tomato plant. There's a lot of things. You have resources online. We need to learn from this. Real quick, before we close out, it's a short class. Get me the book of, let's jump 29 to 29, verse, I think it's 25. So he mentions it more than one time. Uh, let's look at it real quick. Uh, Jeremiah 29, find it for me, verse, yes, 28. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 28. For therefore he sent unto us in Babylon, saying, He sent unto us, he sent unto us in Babylon, saying, read on, This captivity is long. Yo, so now, think about it. We in America, right? This is the longer than Babylon. He's like, this captivity is long, brother. So they're having a conversation, right? We say the same thing. I get off of work. I'm tired. I got time to do no garden. I ain't got time to go out there and try to raise fruit trees. Man, this captivity is long, brother. Read on. Build ye houses. No. But he said build ye houses. Read on. And dwell in them. And dwell in them. Read on. And plant gardens. He's saying the same thing, but through a conversation. Read on. And eat the fruit of them. So the Lord is telling us we got to plant these peach, plums, apples, nectarine trees, all these other trees, these eggplants, all these different crops, this kale, the cabbage, celery, all of that. The date, black walnuts, pecans. Oh, we have to learn how to do all of that. And then after we learn about the soil and do the vineyards, the orchards, and the doggone gardens, then we have to do what? And what? And plant gardens. Plant gardens, come on. Build ye houses, dwell in them, and plant gardens, and eat the fruit of them. That's the point. You're doing it because you control. You're eating the fruit of your crops, meaning we can control what goes in them plants. We don't have, we can use organic or natural pesticides. We don't have to use chemicals. We can make our food taste better. Because remember Genesis said he made fruit of the ground. The key is in the ground. The key is dealing with your ground. Getting your ground right. And you know what? I don't have all the answers. But guess what? Together, through learning about our forefathers, researching on our own, we can learn and we can become small gardeners. Each and every single one of our congregants, we can grow up, we can raise up and grow our own food. If, if for example, if in Louisiana, in Mississippi, if we got 10 brothers that's doing that, we can have enough to feed the whole congregation where we at. It can happen. People are doing it. These other nations are doing it right now. So with that, that concludes part one to 15 minutes with the captains. Next week, we're going to come back uh, and go to part two, where we're going to show you more about the gardening. And guess what? What do we do with the stuff when we have? We can change our diet completely the way that we eat. So with that, this is Captain Shep. 15 minutes for the captain. My dedicated reader to my left. Officer Matthew. Most high in Christ. Bless Israel. Shalom.
I'm a Jew with sound art For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't singing that no more, it's sound man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram. Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.